Last topic I wanted to talk about is partial sums. So hopefully you've realized that we've looked at sequences and that sequences can both be, you can have something that goes on forever. So the pattern just continues. This is considered infinite. Or we can have a finite sequence, something that stops. We can have one that's only the first 10 terms or maybe just the first three. And this would be a finite sequence. Clearly, it's easier to sum a finite sequence because we have a finite amount of numbers that we can add together. An infinite sequence is a little bit harder to sum. If you go on to higher maths, you will look at how to sum finite sequences, or infinite sequences. We're going to focus on the finite sequences. When we do that, so say we have an infinite sequence, like the one here but we only want to sum the first five terms. This is called a partial sum. And we can find the nth partial sum we want. So if we wanted to say the first five terms, we would call this the summation five, and this will equal the summation from i equals one to five of our sequence. We wanted the tenth partial sum. This would be the summation from i equals one to 10 of our sequence. The summation, a partial sum, is considered a finite series. We're adding a finite amount of terms. You can also look at infinite series, but I'll leave that for later in your math career, or possibly in class. If you really want to know what that looks like, go ahead, shoot me an email. I'd be happy to put together some videos about infinite series and how you look at those summations. For now, let's focus on finite sums. I want you to find the indicated partial sums as shown below in example three. Try these on your own first and then resume the video when you're ready to check your solution. Okay, for this first one, we're finding the sixth partial sum, which means we are summing from i equals one to six of n squared plus n. Well, this is going to be the summation from i equals 1 to 6 of n squared plus the summation from i equals 1 to 6 of n. Using my formulas, I can realize that this is going to be 6 times 7 times 13 all over 6 plus 6 times 7 over 2. Sixes cancel over here. My six and my two reduce. Thus, I'm left with seven times 13, which gives me 91, plus seven times three, which is 21. And I end up with 112. This is considered the sixth partial sum. So your final answer is S sub six equals 112. Now let's look at the eighth partial sum for the following series. This means I'm summing from i equals one to eight of three n minus five. This is the same as three times the summation from one equals, i equals one to eight of n minus five times the summation of one, i equals one to eight of one. I use my formulas and I find that I get 3 times 8 times 9 all over 2 minus 5 times 8, which gives me the 2 and the 8 reduce. I get 3 times 4 times 9 is 108 minus 5 times 8 is 40. 108 minus 40 will give me 68. So the eighth partial sum of that series is 68. There are actually formulas if we are looking specifically at arithmetic or geometric sequences. And that's what we'll look at next. That should only take one more video.